Yeah, what stands out to me is not any of the numbers here, but the flags behind him. Giorgita fighting from here in Italy. This crowd so passionate, they'll be behind him. Let's go to Michael C. Williams for the official introductions. Sid Mandela Forum here in Firenze, Italia. As tonight, Spike Sports presents Bellator Kickboxing. Inside the Bellator ring, we begin the night with three three-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.6 pounds. His professional record: 15 wins, five by way of knockout, along with three defeats. Fighting out of San Marino, Italia, presenting Roberto Titano Giorgita. And across the ring is adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5'11", weighing in 145.8 pounds. As a professional, he brings 14 victories, one by way of knockout, along with five losses. Fighting out of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, introducing Gabriel Varga. In charge of the action, your referee, Brian Miner. Third man in the ring is Brian Miner. So we will kick things off with some featherweight competition. Roberto Giorgita, while representing one of the world's oldest republics, San Marino, Italia, born and spent his childhood in Romania, a country that has produced quality kickboxers, including one of the world's best heavyweights, the savage samurai, Daniel Gita, and of course, Varga, who's in the red gloves, out of the true North strong and free and so many terrific kickboxers out of the great white North, the fight clock brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's diner. And while Varga fell short in his Bellator kickboxing debut as he launches a Superman punch on Giorgita, Jimmy, Varga, one of the most technically proficient kickboxers you will find in the sport. I think he's going to need that technique tonight. At 32 years old, he's in a weight class that requires a lot of speed, a lot of timing. He says, I've slowed down a little bit. And what happened is I tried to cut sparring out. As I got older, I realized that hurt me. I did a lot of heavy sparring leading up into this fight. We'll see newly minted Bellator kickboxing featherweight champion Kevin Ross in action coming up in the next fight. Also a Three round, that will be a non-title affair, but uh, Giorgita attacking the lead leg inside with the low kick. Varga putting together a nice punch kick combination, so an aggressive start by both parties. Yeah, and you're seeing the strengths. Varga very tight with his combinations. They flow together very, very well. Keeps his guard extremely high. The technique you talked about earlier. Giorgita lands a front kick and a good right hand. So Giorgita. Representing Italia, goes downstairs inside, low kick. Spinning back kick by Varga, but Giorgita seems to have just a little extra steam on his strikes. And very sharp, and he commits to that right hand. You see his whole body almost fly across the ring. Here in glory, excuse me, Bellator kickboxing here. He, Gabriel Varga, of course, a former glory champion. I'm a for, former glory announcer, but he in Bellator a lot of his kickboxing, fights. You yeah. can clinch and immediately attack with the knee, Jimmy. Exactly. But both these guys, what I like is they're comfortable fighting from distance. And both are seeking glory in the Bellator kickboxing ring. Exactly. Giorgito told us that he predicted a technical affair. And despite Varga's impressive resume, Giorgito feels that he has the skills necessary to defeat the Canadian. Incredibly motivated for this opportunity on the big stage. Giorgita competing in the Bellator ring for the first time. And he has not fought intimidated. He's been right in the face of Varga. Varga's coming off a unanimous decision victory in China in June, has won seven of his last 10 fights, but lost a split decision to Gabor Gorbix at Bellator Kickboxing Six back in April. He didn't really feel like he did much of anything in that fight, so looking for a much better effort in his sophomore effort, a launching knee strike by Varga in the final seconds of the opening round. 
Back at the Nelson Mandela Forum in Firenze, Italia, Varga receiving words from his older brother, Aaron. In fact, all three Varga brothers compete in, or have competed in martial arts. His other brother trying to uh, qualify for the Canadian Olympic boxing team. That's Jacob, but as uh, round two gets underway, the unofficial scorecard belongs to my broadcast partner, Jimmy Smith. Very close first round, went slightly 10-9 Varga, threw more combinations, a little busier, and he was very crisp with his shots. Now the difference here is he's fighting an Italian fighter, and I thought when Giorgita moved forward, he threw very, very hard. That might sway the judges. Varga sticks a sharp jab as Giorgita along the ropes momentarily. Well, you see the accuracy, the tightness of his combinations. Very accurate with his strikes is Varga. Varga with the liver kick. Now in the clinch, and again, in Bellator kickboxing, if you clinch, you have to immediately launch a knee strike. And by the way, scoring done on the 10-point must system. Winner of each round gets 10 points. Opponent nine or less with priority on the knockdowns. That won't be ruled a knockdown. One minute gone in the second round. Varga, also a classically trained pianist, hoping to hit all the right notes in this his second fight in the Bellator kickboxing ring. So far, so good. Varga checked that first kick, but then Giorgita able to land the body kick. And he's doing a good job of countering Giorgita's aggression, especially with the left hook. And nice counter right hand by Giorgita. Giorgita appears to be the more powerful of the two, but Varga just so, so sharp in his technique. Yeah, very crisp. Every time he throws that left hand, be it a jab or a hook, it's landing over the top. In his youth, Giorgita got a kick out of playing soccer and being a karate nice. kid, a kid, but when he moved to Italia at the age of 14, he gave up sports for the most part, then started kickboxing at the age of 19, fell in love with it, and now is on a journey to see just how far he can go in the sport in tough against Gabriel Varga. That's two left hands in a row. Both of them land very, very clean. He's taking advantage of the fact that Giorgita is letting that right hand drift a little bit low. Final 45 seconds of the second round. Varga walking down Giorgita. Giorgita delivers a knee in the clinch, as does Varga, before referee Minor will separate them. You tell neither guy really much of a clinch fighter. They seem to be very content at this middle and long range distance. And I like the way they're diversifying uh, their attack. Again. And Varga now has Giorgita along the ropes. Pops his head back like the proverbial Pez dispenser with that right hand, and now Varga teeing off on Giorgita. This might be over, there and it is. And it is! KO Canada! Gabriel Varga picks up his first victory in the Bellator kickboxing ring, impressive fashion. It all started with that shot with the left, the left hook, the jab, that set all those combinations up. Beautiful, tight, technical work by Varga. Let's take a look at how Gabriel Varga finished this fight in style, teeing off on Giorgita in the corner, landing lefts and rights upstairs, buckling the knees of Giorgita before Brian Miner, the referee, sees enough. Gabriel Varga, victorious here in Florence, Italy. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator ring, it comes to an end officially. Two minutes, 49 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO, Gabriel Varga. So again, the country of Canada producing so many stalwart kickboxers, including Joseph Valtellini, Simon Marcus, and of course, Gabriel Varga, who I'm sure has designs on vying for the Bellator kickboxing featherweight crown and a great sign of sportsmanship there between the two warriors as Jimmy Smith will now speak to the victor. I'm here with your winner, Gabriel Varga. You said you went back to hard sparring for this fight. You did a lot of that. It showed. You weathered that early attack well and responded with technique. How did it feel? Uh, it, it felt good to get a KO. That's the first one in a while. I'm usually pretty timid once I hurt guys. I don't like to rush in, so... I still didn't go flat out for it, but the left hook just kept landing, and you know the, the, the sparring is nice to get back into. You feel a little more comfortable. And uh, the first round wasn't great, but my brother always tells me exactly what to do and put the pressure on, he said. 
and it works. So. I know you're fighting an Italian fighter, but this knowledgeable crowd, man, really appreciative of your performance. What's it like to win in front of them? It's, uh, it's great. Uh, the last time I was here in Milan, I had a, a rough fight. I didn't get to put on my best performance. Uh, it's nice to be back and, and have such a full crowd and great fans for the kickboxing world and give them a good show. Hey, great show for everybody. We appreciate it. Gabriel Varga, ladies and gentlemen. His father was a martial artist, introduced him to the martial arts and Gabriel Varga, impressive in his first Bellator kickboxing win. And look at the difference in age. Kevin lost 37, Imani only 26. With the official introductions here once again is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on Spike, Bellator kickboxing now features three three-minute rounds and a catch weight of 150 pounds. Introducing first out of the blue corner at five foot nine, weighing in 149.5 pounds. Tonight, he stands with 51 professional victories, 13 defeats, two wins coming by way of knockout by way of Morocco. He fights out of Camarone, Italia, presenting Amza, Black Panther, Imane. And across the ring is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at five foot 10, weighing in 149.4 pounds. His title not on the line tonight. The reigning Bellator kickboxing featherweight world champion enters with 33 professional victories, 16 coming by way of knockout against nine defeats. Fighting out of Dublin, California, USA, introducing Kevin, the soul assassin, Raw. In charge of the action, your referee, Francesco Pellegrino. Francesco Pellegrino will be the referee for this catchweight affair. The sole assassin, Kevin Ross, who got the nickname after his first pro fight in Mexico. Someone in the audience said that he assassinated his opponent, so they ended up branding him the sole assassin. That's a, a cool sobriquet, to say the least. But Hamza Imani, the Black Panther, looking to upset Ross here tonight in this non-title affair. Fight Clock brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's Diner. And Jimmy Ross, as he attacks the liver with that left hook, told us that he's very intrigued by this fight because even though he has the experience on Imani, Imani has the size on him. And Having that kind of uh, equation, well, it's a, it's a good test for a guy like Ross. Yeah, it certainly is. And also, he's facing guys coming out southpaw. He's got to watch the left hand over the top from that side. A lot of challenges in this for Ross. Also, a short fight, only three rounds. You do not have time to really feel your opponent out. If that comes in bigger, you don't want to take that first round, seeing what he's got. you got to attack early. Yeah, showcase of the Bellator kickboxing champions, a, a Christmas uh, treat for the kickboxing fans around the world, and especially here in Italy, as was in Italia, where Bellator kickboxing began in Torino. Oh, nice. couple of nice left hooks by Imane. He's not showing up here just to be an opponent. He wants to beat Ross and move into pole position to get an opportunity to beat Ross again for the title. You know, when you talk to these fighters about this being a non-title fight, what difference does it make? It makes a difference in terms of the rounds, it really does, but Kevin Ross is not gonna walk up with his head held high after a loss going, well, I'm still the champion. Because he won't be the champion in his eyes, he'd want that fight back. And it's funny you say that because Ross told yeah. us he feels what makes a champion is the entirety of a career. It's not about one fight or even a series of fights. It's not about winning streaks or anything like that. More than anything, it's how you handle yourself after your losses and after hard times. So Kevin Ross, again, 37, has uh, been around the block a few times, worn a groove into it, and now grooving with that body work. But Imane staying in the pocket, flashes the jab. Oh, body work is what you want to put oh, in early. Beautiful front job. kick to the face by Ross. That's what takes the wind out of a guy. It takes his legs away, working the body early. That's why he's going to it in the first round. Yeah, Ross making that investment, hoping that it will pay the, the dividends. Final minute of the opening round. Two, three, 
Imani along the fence, or excuse me, the, the ropes fence is the Bellator MMA. We're doing both here in Florence, so please bear with me. <laughs> Jet lag, my friends. 30 seconds left in the opening round. All right, we have technical difficulties with my broadcast colleague, Jimmy Smith's headset. We hope to repair that as soon as possible. As we near the final moments of this round, a nice spinning kick to the liver by Mane, but uh, first round is in the books. The bell and round two of this catchweight affair between Bellator kickboxing featherweight champion, Kevin Ross in the Red gloves and the Black Panther Hamza Imani in the blue gloves. Still trying to work on bringing Jimmy Smith back to the broadcast. We apologize for the technical difficulties as Imani looking to make this fight difficult for Ross attacking the body with knee strikes. Nice left hook, sweeping left hook by Imani that caught Ross upstairs. We talk about Kevin Ross's resume as again Imani going to the liver with that spinning heel kick. But Ross absorbs it. Oh, blocks that left head kick as Ross attacks the body again before clinching. And Ross has done everything when it comes to striking as he lands the jab, goes to the body again with the right hand. He's competed in MMA, boxing, Muay Thai, Sancho, and of course kickboxing, but 85% of his fights have been Muay Thai fights. And the biggest difference, of course, between Muay Thai and Bellator kickboxing, no elbow strikes allowed in Bellator kickboxing. Again, Imani launches that left hand upstairs as we near the midpoint of the round and the fight. Imani confident in throwing that left hook. Not at all swallowed up by the magnitude of the moment, knowing that he's facing the man at the top of the totem pole in the Bellator kickboxing featherweight division. Imani launching kicks from the ropes. Very active in his attack. Pushes Ross back with a minute left in the second stanza. Imani landed that right hand over the top of Ross's jab. Again, Imani tagging Ross with the right as Ross trying to slow down Imani's momentum by clinching, and Imani again targets the head and lands and clips him with the left hook on the jaw. And another right hand by Imani as Ross now finally lands a left hook to the body. So a furious pace here in round two. As Ross trying to muscle Imani, gets warned by the referee. Again, Ross changing levels, going to the body, shooting upstairs. Terrific round two of action here at Bellator Kickboxing in Florence. We are back, and so is Jimmy Smith. You were fantastic, Mo. I just want that you to know that. That was the longest you bathroom were... break I've ever wow. seen any one of my coworkers take, brother. You know, I, I hold it most of the time, but sometimes I got to go. Well, the way it goes. speaking All of right. going, round three, my man, and I know you were watching <laughs> I intently. was. How did you see round two? I thought it was a great round for Imani. I thought it was a great round for Imani as well. I have it all tied up. I thought Ross took round one. I think Imani had a little bit of the jitters in round one, got him out of his system in round two. Imani strafing the body with that left hand. Again, a non-title fight, but Imani acquitting himself well in this three-round affair as Ross lands the body kick. Ty clinch, and again, referee will interject Jimmy as uh, here in Bellator kickboxing. If you clinch, you have to launch that knee immediately. And you see the frustration on the face of Kevin Ross because Imani's done very well at this medium range with his hands. And, and Kevin Ross. Ross is trying to beat that with his activity level. He doesn't want to get clinched, he doesn't want to get slowed down. Imani checked that kick. Oh, and Imani looking for the 
The flashy finish with that spinning back fist, which is legal. A minute gone in round three. Ross digging away to the body. Money still swinging wild in this third round, but a little less accurate than it was in round two. Still a furious pace, and again, with three three-minute rounds, that's what makes yeah. kickboxing the sport of the millennium, the short attention span that <laughs> our society's become, and everyone loves the stand-up fighting, Jimmy. I like what Ross is doing now. He's the one moving forward. He's all oh. stopped a nice high kick. Trip not worth anything <laughs> in the belt or scoring. Ross knew it was cheeky, gave him a smile, but oh, and Imani just missing with that right uppercut. But to me, that's been a little bit more of the story this round. Imani's been throwing big ones, but hasn't been landing right. as effectively. And no. Ross countering with the jab, keeping it simple but effective because Imani, you're right. I mean, his pace is, is incredible, but he can be wild at times. Now, Ross knows you're fighting a bigger guy. It's a matter of, I can't go one for one. I have to go three for one, four for one. Almost everything he throws is in combination like that. Under a minute left in the fight, still very much anybody's fight. Yeah. Up for grabs, I'd have Ross slightly ahead right now, but still very much up for grabs. 45 seconds left in this catchweight affair. Ross much smarter about those initial lead power shots. Nice jab, but a good counter right hand by Imane. Ross has family here in Italy, loves competing in this part of the world. And hoping to secure the victory. Someone, if given the opportunity with 20 seconds, would love to put a exclamation point on the proceedings. 15 seconds left. And you also want to prevent your Italian opponent from finishing strong in this third round. Imane from Morocco, but makes his home in Camayore, Italia. Great fight that goes the distance. So Hamza Imane in his first fight in the Bellator kickboxing ring feels pretty good about his performance. But we will get the official decision when we come back. You're watching Bellator Kickboxing. We have just witnessed a hotly contested fight at a catch weight. And uh, Jimmy, let's uh, take a look at the action that we just witnessed. I love the back and forth of this fight. Imani doing very well with his punches, especially left hook and the overhand right. Kevin Ross accurate with his combinations in rounds one and three. It was conjoined twins close. Let's see how the judges score it, shall we? Here's Michael C. Williams with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance inside, the Bellator ring will go to your three judges. Your first judge, Matteo Manganello, scores the fight 29 to 28. He scores the fight for Ross. Your second judge, Sal Yamano, scores the fight 29 to 28. He sees the fight for Imane. Your third and final judge at ringside, Todd Anderson, scores the fight 29 to 28 for the winner by split decision, Amza Black Panther Imani. Mamma mia, Hamza Imani in his first fight in the Bellator kickboxing ring, and what a classy champion Kevin Ross is. But here tonight in Florence, Imani whose desire was to become one of the greatest fighters in the world. That's where he gets his motivation, Jimmy. He wants to leave his mark in the sport. He just left his mark in his Bellator kickboxing debut. He upset the champion, and that should give him a championship opportunity. You gotta do it again with five rounds. And, and look at the record, John Wade Park, 97 and 32, taking an opponent 24 and five. Here once again is Michael C. Williams. From Firenze denied, Bellator kickboxing on spike. Now features three three minute rounds and a catch weight of 163 pounds. And we introduce first, fighting out of the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 161.6 pounds. His professional record, 24 wins, five losses, five of those wins coming by way of knockout from Perugina, Italia, presenting Pier Giulio Titano Paolucci. <laughs> a 
And across the ring is Adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 162.8 pounds. The veteran professional returns to the Bellator ring tonight with 97 wins, 45 coming by way of knockout, along with 32 defeats. He fights out of the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Introducing the gun slinger, John Wayne Paul. Do you think he loves what he does? Can't get that smile off his face. Referee Dan Big Dan Mergliata will oversee the proceedings. Three three minute rounds. Paolucci's nickname Titano, looking to knock off one of the titans of stand-up fighting. And uh, John Wayne Parping, homage to his Muay Thai background, wearing the Mong Khan. Thought uh, Parr was going to do a Y crew there for a minute, Love uh, Jimmy. Love to see it. Personal. Fight Clock uh, brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's Diner. John Wayne Parr in the red gloves. Pierre Giulio Paolucci in the blue gloves. Paolucci fighting out of Terracina, Italy. John Wayne Parr looking to bring the thunder from down under. You know, Parr told me one of the things he likes to do is, especially in that opening round, Hit hard. Even if I don't land big, let him know that I have power punches. Get him thinking about it. Get him overreacting to it. So even if he hits him on the arms, doesn't matter where he hits him. He wants to hit him hard in round one. Paolucci, 17 years younger. He says that will definitely give him an edge in this fight. He knows that Parr can use his experience, but Paolucci wants to bring it into deep water, as deep as you can go in a nine-minute fight. But uh, Parr... Attacking the body like it was filled with candy there here in the opening minute. What Paolucci wants to do is keep the pace high. If he believes his youth gives him an advantage, that means you throw a lot all three rounds. Outwork your older opponent, make it about your pacing. Bar attacking Paolucci's lead leg. Inside low kick by Paolucci along the ropes. Par checked that. Inside, low kick by Paolucci. And Parr just attacking the head with the basic one-two. And again, Parr doing a great job of checking those kicks. Yeah, Parr, very awkward style. Just walks forward and, and rock him, sock yeah, robots kind of style. Paolucci it works. With two right hands on the knee, Jimmy. Yep. Parr told us that there would be violence in this fight, lots of it. He wants to put on a show in what he feels and we know is one of the most stacked Bellator kickboxing cards to date. Featuring the likes of John Wayne Parr. We already saw Kevin Ross upset. The featherweight champion was defeated. Oh, nice left hook just above the belt line by Parr. And he's throwing no thought of his own defense. Hands floating very, very low. Not concerned about the power of Paulucci at all. Paolucci has five knockout wins in his 24 victories. Meanwhile, Parr, almost half of his victories have come via form of knockout with 45 of these two trade. Again, Parr checking Paolucci's kick. Parr has more losses than Paolucci has fights. <laughs> Still going strong at the age of 41, strafing the body. Oh. And then Parr goes upstairs with a left hand. Paolucci, no head movement. He's been an easy target so far for this style of par. Rock him, suck him action to kick this fight off. Now John Wayne Parr, we talked about his experience, talked about his age. He still goes in there and throws. That was on display in round one, moving forward, throwing combinations to the body, to the head. No thought of the counter of Paolucci. He was the aggressor for certain in round one. Round two underway, John Wayne Parr in the red gloves. His opponent pair, Giulio Paolucci, in the blue gloves. Catchweight contest, unofficial scorecard reads. 10-9, John Wayne Parr. Like I said, he was the aggressor. He was one landing the big punches in round one. We haven't seen is that diversified offense of Paolucci. 
a check left hook, something over the top to give Parr a reason to back up. That hasn't been there. He's been trying to counter with straight punches, and Parr's just been better at that game. Yeah, Parr smothering Paolucci. Paolucci spent some time in prison when he was a kid. Knew that he made a mistake, wanted to turn his life around. And how, I mean, you hear the story ad nauseum. Yeah. Combat sports, martial arts, literally saves lives, Jimmy. No, it's one of those things you can walk into a gym and start doing. Oh. If, you have the, if you have the passion, if you have the desire to do it, that's why it takes kids off the streets. You can walk into a gym and get started. Doesn't take a lot of equipment, and you can go. Hard looking to take uh, Paolucci off his feet with that sustained body attack, mixing it up with knee strikes. Has Paolucci in the corner, and Parr doing a good job of attacking the body and then going upstairs. Oh, nice right, right hand. hand. Paolucci right now, no, no offensive or defensive answer for Parr. The best he's been able to do is kind of cover up and avoid some damage, but... Nothing returning in a style where John Parr is coming forward in a straight line, hands down throwing. Yep. He's got to time him and give him a reason to not do that, and so far he hasn't. Spinning back kick there by Parr, and Paolucci turning him. his back to Parr. That, that could have almost been it because you cannot turn your back to an opponent. I, I don't know what the break was there for. He should have been and, hitting him with the left. And Dan Mergliata telling Paolucci, yep. you can't turn your back to your opponent. He'll stop the fight. I saw Paolucci pointing down like it was maybe a low blow, but I don't know what that was about. Under 45 seconds left in the second round. And again, John Wayne Parr. Offensive onslaught clipped. Paolucci another with the right one. hand. Another right hand. Paolucci no, with pa more holes in his defense and Swiss cheese, Jimmy. <laughs> and also, Paolucci said, my youth is going to be a factor in this fight. He's been outworked by the older brother. That's where you should show us. Hey, I can throw more than you. I can be busier. I can be more athletic. I can be faster. He hasn't so far been any of those things. And of course, John Wayne Parr knows that prize fighting, it's all about the cheddar making it better. Got to complete the cheese analogy as uh, John Wayne Parr looking good here in Florence, Italy. And here's a spinning back kick. Right here, John Wayne Parr in the corner. And Paolucci just covering up. There's a shot of it from another angle. Just all over Paolucci in that round two. Third and final round. How do you have it on your unofficial scorecard as John Wayne Parr in the red gloves goes back to work? 10-9 in round two for the exact same reason. John Wayne Parr moving forward, being the aggressor, landing punches. Parr told us he would love to capture a Bellator kickboxing title. Performances like this may just give him an opportunity, but Paolucci, having defensive issues again, gets tagged with the right hand. Push, kick, the teep from Muay Thai by Parr. And he's breathing very heavily. I just don't think he was ready for this activity level from oh, John Wayne Parr. A couple of sh shots that sent saliva expectorating out of both mouths. And Parr putting together, it's almost that Dutch style, the combination to the body and then that low kick. You know, I've seen this look before. B-Hop versus Kelly Pavlik. For those of you who saw that boxing match, this look of like... Oh. What's going on? I can't believe this old guy is working this hard and outworking the younger fighter, but that's what we're seeing. Parr is just throwing a lot. He's the one moving forward. Paolucci doesn't look like he was physically ready for this kind of fight. Yeah, Paolucci doesn't appear yeah. to have a, a, a plan B. And really, gee, it's John Wayne Parr. You know, winter's here, and it's a, it's a blizzard of activity as Paolucci slips and falls. And that looks like just fatigue to me. Sharp jab splits the guard of Paolucci by John Wayne Parr. And Parr now just putting on a show. Never par for the course, that's for sure, Jimmy. That's this true. guy continues to impress at the age of 41. Fighting someone 17 years younger than him. Under a minute left now in the fight. It's all John Wayne Parr. And he's now plastering Paolucci in the corner. Oh! And that shot drops Paolucci. 
Right hook by Parr. Paulucci goes down for the first time in the fight. What the? Now that's not his corner. No, that's the medical staff that made a big boo-boo there. Yeah. That's the corner, that's the end of the fight. Oh, absolutely, but I, that's that what was I not thought. I just want to make well, that clear. Now a desperate Paulucci drawing the fire back, but John Wayne Parr proving to be that's too it. much. Dan Mergliata steps in. The 41-year-old John Wayne Parr picks up his 98th career win. This is 41. Not bad for an old man. Great stuff by John Wayne Parr. Loved his aggression. He was just in the face of Paulucci all three rounds. And just like that, John Wayne Parr has recorded his sixth straight victory. There are indeed a lot more bullets for the gunslinger. The official announcement is just around the corner. Well, Spike Sports just produced the John Wayne Parr show, the 41-year-old in his second Bellator kickboxing outing, proving to be too much for the much younger Per Giulio Paolucci, as Parr lighting him up like a Christmas tree with those punches and then the right hook dropping Paolucci. And that was it. Night, night, as John Wayne Parr improves to 98 and 32 with his 46th career win inside the distance. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator ring, it's waved off officially two minutes, 32 seconds into round number three. The winner by Team KO, the gun slinger, John Wayne Paul. Appreciative crowd here at the Nelson Mandela Forum for John Wayne Parr standing by with our Jimmy Smith. I'm here with your winner, John Wayne Parr, your nickname, The Gunslinger. You fired everything you had tonight, just walking forward, throwing punches. That was a strategy from the beginning. Uh, I'm very excited to be, to be 41 years old, to have this opportunity to fight on such a major promotion such as Bellator. Uh, I really wanted to put a good entertaining performance on for this evening for everyone, not only here, but for everyone on Spike TV in America. Um, I, I want to make a name, I want to be somebody. And the only way I do that is to perform here tonight and hopefully I entertain you guys. So thank you very much for the opportunity, Bellator and Scott Coker. Your 98th professional win we have in kickback. 99 now. 99 now. How would you like to make it 100 in the Bellator ring? Yeah, I'd love to get 100 wins, that's the dream. So. Uh, 131 fights now, 99 wins, uh, 46 knockouts, and uh, I want more. Uh, I'm 41. I don't want to get old. I love this sport too much to stop, so please don't get old. Please don't let me get old. Well, you don't look like you're getting old tonight. You look fantastic. John Wayne Parr, ladies and gentlemen. An inspiration of 40-somethings everywhere. He's had more stitches than a bag of baseballs, 330 to be exact, but he is so fresh, so clean, unscathed tonight. John Wayne Parr with a tremendous victory. And you see here the record. Verlinden, 46, 19, and one. Joe Schilling, 22, and nine, but he's been in a lot of big fights. Here with the official introductions is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Spike Sports now presents tonight's Bellator kickboxing co-main event of the evening. Three, three minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 185.8 pounds. His professional record, 46 wins, 19 losses, one draw, 19 of those victories coming by way of knockout from Bernard of Belgium, presenting Philip the Belgium Valinde. And across the ring is adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot three, weighing in 185.2 pounds as a professional. Tonight, he stands with 22 victories, 13 by way of knockout and 9 defeats. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, USA, presenting Joe Stitch him up, Chile. And the referee in charge of the action, Brian Miner. So Brian Miner has been assigned the task of overseeing this three-round middleweight affair in the Bellator kickboxing ring. Ready? Ready? So 
So here in Florence, Italy, Joe Schilling in the red gloves, Philip Verlinden in the blue gloves, finally cross paths. Fight clock brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's Diner. And Verlinden told us he feels that Schilling more of a brawler, Verlinden more of a technical fighter who never avoids a good brawl. Verlinden says the audience is going to see, quote, one hell of a fight, close quote. And you will note, Jimmy, that uh, Schilling likes to switch stances, nice. likes to keep his opponents guessing. He's very good. I think when he starts off with the jab, when he uses his range, when he goes from the lead hand, that's when he's most successful. When he starts leading with power shots, I think he gets caught on the inside a little bit too often. Schilling from a southpaw stance, clips Verlinden. It's a good sign when the jab is working early. Verlinden. Loves the head kick or knee knockout. Looking for the highlight reel. There was the Superman punch from the southpaw stance for Schilling. Of course, he was on the receiving end of one of the, uh, well, most notorious Superman punches in Bellator history. Yeah, Hisaki Kato, beautiful shot. Head kick blocked by Verlinden. The striking angles in MMA, very, very different. See Joe staying very tight right now. Tight guard, straight punches. That's the things when you come in here, Valentin, like he said, he said, oh, a, you know, he's a brawler, he throws wild. Well, Joe Schilling can change it up on you and get technical, and you're in a totally different fight. Schilling has Verlinden along the ropes. Verlinden trying to land the right hand on the exit. This is with the left. Schilling checked that low kick, and now Schilling stapling Verlinden to the ropes with those punches. Under a minute left in the first. It's almost a reversal of what a lot of people thought we would see. Joe Schilling come in with straight, tight punches. Verlinden trying to counter with wider shots. Joe Schilling's been the inside striker so far. And by inside, I mean straight lines right through the center. Got to get around him or through him. And Schilling. Effective from the southpaw stance. As soon as I say it, he switches to orthodox. Just want to change it up on you. He heard that. Verlinden misses with the <laughs> kick. Oh, Verlinden landed the overhand right. And we'll see if this changes things. If, if Joe Schilling eats a couple and starts brawling, because I thought he was doing great with a technical fight, but Verlinden now taking advantage with the overhand right. So in the final seconds of the opening round, Philip Verlinden having his first taste of success. Schilling misses with the sweeping left hook. Was caught off balance there by Verlinden. Yeah, Schilling very successful, I think, with those tight strikes in round one. Everything close, contained. Look at the mini Superman punch there. But sharp combinations like this kept Verlinden on the defensive until the last 30 seconds of the round, which is what a lot of judges see. Okay, it was a Superboy punch. Oh, that's a great way to put it. Jimmy, how do you have it after one, my man? The 10-9 Joe Schilling, but bear in mind, Verlinden finished strong. A lot of judges weighed that last minute, 30 seconds, more heavily than the rest of the fight. Stitch him up, Joe Schilling in the red gloves, the Belgian bull, Philip Verlinden in the blue gloves, two decorated veterans of the sport finally meeting here in Florence, Italy in the Bellator kickboxing ring. Schilling testing the waters with that front kick. Double pump jab by Verlinden. If you're in Verlinden's corner in between rounds, you see that's how you do it. See that success you had in that the last 30 seconds? I want you to start off like that this time. Except it's starting off the way the first did with Schilling coming forward, although Verlinden landed a nice counter right hand. Yeah, he's discovering that counter right over the top. Schilling straight ahead. Putting together, nice combination. The lead right hand, left hook to the liver. And Verlinden pot shotting Schilling to the body. But style wise, look at the way they carry their chins. Joe Schilling, chin tends to be carried very, very high. He throws good combinations, but he leaves his chin up there for the counter shot. You will never sweat the technique when you see Philip Verlinden and Joe Schilling in the ring. Two of the best, and again, two guys who have been on each other's radar for many years. Finally, this fight comes to fruition. Here in Firenze, minute and a half left in the second round. 
Schilling continues to dictate the pace of the fight. Yeah, he's been the aggressor. He's been the dictator. Berlinden has had his countering opportunities. I think he needs a few more of them in order to win rounds. Schilling with busy behind the jab, but doesn't follow up. Under a minute now left in the second round. They exchange jabs. Outside low kick scores for Verlinden. That kick forced Schilling to switch to southpaw momentarily before going back to orthodox. Nice counter left by Schilling. Schilling's had good vision, good awareness so far in this fight. Nice. Verlinden very heavy with the kicks. They thud every time he lands. 19 of Verlinden's 46 wins have come via form of knockout. 12 of Schilling's 21 victories have come inside the distance. 15 seconds left in the second round. Push kick scores for Schilling. Left hand and then a right over the top by Verlinden. We're headed to the third round. As advertised, a quality kickboxing encounter between middleweights, stitch em up Joe Schilling. Looking to move to four and one in Bellator kickboxing and a Bellator newcomer, Philip Verlinden, who understands that uh, urgency needs to be the key here in the third and final round, Jimmy. How do you have it after two? Two rounds to none for Schilling. But right now, Verlinden starting off counting oh. early in the round. Look at that uppercut right, right uppercut to the center. And then the left hand beautifully done by Schilling. Joe Schilling's not the kind of guy to take a counter punch early in a round and just let it slide. He's going to get much more aggressive after that. Plenty of respect between these two veterans before the fight and Verlinden, well, he is respecting Schilling even more after what Schilling has been able to accomplish thus far in this encounter. Nice right hand over the top by Verlinden. I think it would make due to respect him a little less. Step into that mm -hmm. big shot. See if you can put Schilling oh. on his butt and get this left fight hook. back where you want it. Clip Verlinden on the jaw. Under two minutes left in the fight. As Verlinden has had his moments. He hasn't been able to really string them together. Got to follow up after those counter shots that Schilling has been vulnerable to. Left head kick blocked by Verlinden. Verlinden executes the body kick. But there definitely needs to be an uptick in the offense of Verlinden. Starting to get busy with that body kick. Just past the midpoint of the final round. Problem for Verlinden is his offense has been dictated by the offense of Schilling. He's been counter punching. Schilling's punching less in this third round, giving him fewer counting punching opportunities. He needs to be the initiator. Oh, that uh, straight left popped Verlinden's head back. When Schilling's effective with the jab. It sets up the rest of his offense so well. And again, Schilling doing his best to bedevil the veteran. Of course, Philip Verlinden seen it all, but it still has to give you pause when you see your opponent constantly switching stances. What's funny is Joe Schilling doesn't throw a lot of feet. You know, he'll switch stances and, and then punch from a different angle, which is comparatively rare in kickbox. He doesn't switch and kick very often. He switches and then comes at you with punches. Linden trying to come forward, but again, it's Schilling that initiates the attack. 30 seconds left in the bout. You see Raymond Daniels, for example, he switches stances and uses that as, as a kicking attack. Joe Schilling comes right at you with hands. Raymond Daniels is straight out of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Under 20 seconds left in the fight. You know, freeze a dude, rip his heart out, all that stuff. He just, yeah, that's his thing. But he's not a button masher. <laughs> Whatever wins the game, my friend. And looks like stitch him up Joe Schilling. May have done enough to win the game. Wants to put an exclamation point on it with that spinning back fist. But we're going to the judges' scorecards after a quality kickboxing fight. And uh, again, appreciative crowd here in Florence, Italy, as they applaud the efforts of both Joe Schilling and Philip Verlinden. The official decision when we come back.
So we went the uh, nine minute distance in this middleweight matchup. We've seen some uh, DNA altering uppercuts this year, courtesy of Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou, and uh, Joe Schilling landed a nice right uppercut on the inside. And uh, Philip Verlinden in his Bellator kickboxing debut put up a valiant effort, but for the most part, it was one way traffic, courtesy of Joe Schilling. Let's see how the judges scored it. Here once again, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your official judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Dan Mergliata, scores the fight 30 to 27, while judges Matteo Mangadello and Sal Limado both see the same, 29 to 28. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Joe Stitch em Up Chile. So a mixed reaction from the uh, crowd here in uh, Italy, Europe where the Belgian bull, of course, resides, but a, a quality victory for Joe Schilling and uh, lots of respect between these two battle-tested veterans. Jimmy Smith will be speaking to the man again who claims he's the uncrowned king of the Bellator kickboxing middleweight division. Nice sign of sportsmanship. I'm here with your winner, Joe. Stitch him up, Schilling. Joe. Before we got into this fight, you said, hey, I'm known as a brawler, a guy, a guy who knocks guys out. I can be technical, too. Everything worked off the jab, tight, solid combinations, great stuff from the beginning. Uh, yeah, you know, I got to go back and watch the tape. I, uh, Philippe, uh, his, his distance was bothering me. I'm usually a taller guy. thought I was going to be able to catch with my jab more often. Um, honestly, I got to watch the video game. I thought, I thought Philippe outpointed me three rounds to none. So uh, I got to watch the tape. You know, this, going into this fight, Philippe was by far the toughest opponent I've had. There was no trash talking back and forth. When we were both at glory, we were top three in the world. I have nothing but respect for him. And if he wants to do it again, it'd be nice if it was finally for a fucking title. <laughs> That's all he has to say. Joe Schilling, ladies and gentlemen. Tale of the Tape is brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's Diner. And look at the age, 37. Don't let that number mean anything to his opponent, 24, but Raymond Daniels, speed and accuracy, that's his entire game. All right, one more time, the voice of Bellator, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight from Nelson Mandela Forum, Cadenza Italia, the time has come for the main event of the evening. Three, three minute rounds in the welterweight division. Sanctioned tonight by the ISKA at ringside. President, Mr. Corey Schaefer. Brought to you tonight by Spike Sports. We introduce first the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 171.6 pounds, making his Bellator kickboxing debut. He enters with 27 wins, only one loss, 16 wins coming by way of knockout, hailing from Maruzi, Greece, presenting Gianni Shmukish. And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 171.5 pounds in tonight's non-title fight. The reigning Bellator kickboxing welterweight world champion stands with 32 professional victories, 22 coming by way of knockout with just three defeats. Fighting out of city of Orange, California, USA. Introducing Raymond, the real deal, Daniel. And the referee in charge of the action, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata assigned the task of overseeing this main event for Bellator kickboxing at the Nelson Mandela Forum in Florence, Italy. Three three-minute rounds. The bell in round one, they touch gloves. The, the champion, Raymond Daniels in the red gloves. Janis Bukish in the blue gloves, and it doesn't take long for Raymond Daniels to already draw an ooh from the crowd. Bukish has to weather the early storm or cause one of his own. Fight clock brought to you by Denny's. Welcome to America's Diner. Man. Creative. Creative. To say the least. I mean, you talk about a ring IQ. He has a Mensa IQ and is not afraid 
Jimmy to just put it out there. I mean, uh, I had all oh, jumping knee strike by Daniels. And so far, Bukish hasn't given him a reason to back up yet. Hasn't been able to counter effectively. Back in May 2013, Daniels hit a knockout so amazing that, I mean, when you first look at it, it doesn't seem real. The two touch spinning back kick on Francois Ambang, which started with a jump side kick followed by a midair spin heel kick. It was a voted knockout of the year, not surprisingly. Some called it the knockout of the century, Jimmy. Blood sports stuff. He does stuff you only see in movies. But he makes it work. And Bukash going high with a kick that misses. And Bukash isn't falling for what a lot of fighters have fallen for. Like I said, they become spectators. They start watching him, waiting for his next move. Bukash is starting to press forward, trying to get his own offense going. Bukash's coach, Delios Politis, knows Daniels from the past. As they have been at, whoa, nice, nice straight left hand, right hook combo by Daniels. He says he has a point sparring style. He says, I get in and out. And I hit and then I'm gone. Oh, and Bukash. Well, here in Italy, he just uh, stomped the uh, grapes in uh, Daniel's wine cellar, Jimmy. I knew there'd be something Italian. Th I was trying to guess before you said it, which, and I went, it's And it's not a laughing matter, I understand that, Italian but it's. Italian-centric. I mean. The only, so many ways you can say it. And you, yeah, you come that, up with so many, I love it. I try. You but make, for you Raymond make a Daniels, horrible subject <laughs> a little bit more funny. <laughs> it's, I mean, again, got to give, uh, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, it's not fun, but uh, Raymond Daniels absorbed it. Didn't take the five minutes that he could have, and now they show sportsmanship, and then Daniels shows uh, Bukish's uh, striking techniques. And see Bukish now trying to step forward and close distance. He doesn't want to be at the end of the kicks. Again, the check right hook by Daniels follows that up with the left knee, the southpaw. Trying to befuddle Bukish, who stands in the pocket and eats that jab. Look at that unique trajectory of yeah. the punch, Jimmy. It's almost like when Daniels does something basic, you're like, oh, what, you know, like something that well, someone weird. else, yeah. Whoa, like, what? strange. Wait a minute, what, what's Still that? Watching. Is that a jab? I'm training new stuff. But even the jab comes from the waist. And look at the confidence. Yep. Roy Jones Jr. level there, yeah, hands that's down confidence the waist. And speed, that's what that is. Guys with that style know they're faster oh, than and their the opponents. timing, look at the timing yeah. left hand. His timing makes metronomes nervous. Wow, the tornado kick there. And that clipped Bukish. It's almost like Raymond Daniels is on stage doing his own form of performance art. But Bukish saying, hey, this is a fight. How can Bukish make this his kind of fight in round two? The stepping forward he was doing at the end of round one, a lot more of that crowd the guy who needs space to deliver his strikes. Well, round two. Raymond Daniels in the red gloves. Giannis Bukish in his first outing in the Bellator kickboxing ring in the blue gloves. And Bukish complaining about rabbit punches. Good lateral movement by Daniels. Nice wow. lead left. Yeah, the problem is if you're getting ready for somebody like Raymond Daniels, how do you find a sparring partner who well, fights like this? So difficult to do with his range. You create it yeah. on a video game. Like I said, you have to create. Um, <laughs> you have to step have to into a video game. A video video game be an to extra prepare. in a movie or something. <laughs> the problem with him is you're learning on the job. You're trying to figure out his style while getting your offense going. One minute has elapsed here in the second round. Scheduled for three, it's a non-title affair. Daniels became Bellator kickboxing welterweight champion in his last fight due to a cut stoppage against Karim Gaji. He's won five straight. Short left hook landed for Bukish, but he is trying to solve the matrix that is Raymond Daniels. Another straight left hand splits the guard for Daniels. Bukish though coming forward. Yep. And that one. Another low shot. I'll let that one speak for itself, Jimmy. <laughs> now, if Raymond Dan, you start worrying a little bit. He got worn one once for the rabbit punch. Now a low blow. Dan Murgliata is not going to be real patient with him from here on out. 
those trips and falls. Daniel Sun in the U.S. Marines, stationed at Camp Pendleton in California, so he actually gets to see his son on weekends. Daniel's out of Orange, California. Your neck of the woods there, Jimmy, right? Yeah, Southern California. Nice left hand lands for Raymond Daniels. Look at that movement, yep. angle and jab at the same time. Beautiful left hand to the midsection by Daniels. Lightning quick speed. Lands the left again upstairs. And again, Bookish unable to cut off the ring, cut the ring off here. And uh, Daniels just able to pick him off. So it continues to be a clinic put on by Bellator. Kickboxing welterweight champ Raymond Daniels. Well, Bukash served in the military when he was 19. He needs to bring the heavy artillery in the third and final round. Meanwhile, Daniels, he wants to be the Muhammad Ali of kickboxing. And that's why he always tries to put on a show, goes for those highlight reel knockouts every time he steps in the ring. His goal is to be known as the greatest kickboxer that ever lived. And when it comes to karate, he's the GOAT. You can tell by the, the way he kickboxes, that karate style in and out, very elusive, fast, accurate. Daniels went undefeated in Chuck Norris. World Combat League nice. spinning hook kick to the head by Bookish. Bookish was moving to his left, so didn't absorb it the way Daniels would have liked. Bokas saying, hey, might not be as flashy, but I can kick too. Yeah, and if he can keep him in the corner, that's what we can really get work done. But he's always let Daniels escape. Nice. Hasn't corralled him with his foot. Wow. Daniels <laughs> toying with him with the jab and then the left hand, but Bokas coming forward now. Knee, the kick was blocked. But Daniels, those angles like a la Vasily Lomachenko, Jimmy. Yeah, always where you don't expect him to be. And Bokas, though, trying to make a fight out of it. Knowing that time is his worst enemy, under two minutes left in the bout. During Daniel's illustrious career, he's only lost to two fighters, Joseph Valtellini and twice against Nikki Holskin. Two tremendous fighters in their own right as Daniels peppering Bukash now with a multiple punch combination. Yeah, he's got to catch him in the middle of those combinations. So far he hasn't had the time or speed to do that. Kind of waiting for Daniels to take a rest. And you know, Daniels, to his credit, doesn't take a lot of them. Bukash has a leaky guard. Daniels able to find that straight left hand down the pipe time and time again. Nails him with the jab, Bukash with the body kick. Minute left now in this fight. The main event for Bellator kickboxing here at the Nelson Mandela Forum in Florence, Italy. Will we see another highlight real finish from the Bellator kickboxing welterweight champion? Now one thing to Bukash's credit, none of these strikes have really rocked him. No. He's been solid on his feet, hasn't really been hurt, hasn't been knocked down. And he he's has hung tough. He's trying to bring the fight to the elusive Raymond Daniels. 30 seconds left. Daniels calls Italy his home away from home. He used to compete in sports karate here. So looking to put on a show for the Italian fans and we saw glimpses of what makes him so special in this matchup. Will a second champion be upset? We don't think so, but let's find out from Michael C. Williams. 
Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your judge's scorecard. Your first judge, Eric Colon, scores the fight 29 to 28, while judges Sal D'Amato and Matteo Manganello both see it the same 30 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Raymond, the real deal, Daniel. Make it six in a row for the Bellator kickboxing welterweight kingpin, Raymond Daniels. And while he didn't get the highlight reel finish, the Audience here at the Nelson Mandela Forum in Florence, Italy, still appreciate his skills. Raymond, the real deal, Daniels. What is it Long Beach cops used to tell me when I was a kid? Speed kills? There was plenty of that in this ring tonight. Yeah, I always feel like that's my advantage when I come in here. But first and foremost, as always, I'd like to give glory to God because through him, all things are possible. Thank you to my opponent, Italy. What's up, baby? It's an honor to come here and fight the Italian people. You guys have a beautiful country, beautiful culture, beautiful food, beautiful wine, uh, great history. You guys are a fighting country. I might have some uh, Italian in my DNA because every time I come here, my blood boils and I feel like I'm ready to spar and ready to fight. I said on air, I said, somebody in some gym is right now putting together a plan to try and beat your style. What's your message to them? My message is, come on, take a number, stand in line. You guys will see my highlight reel. Come on and face me if you want to be part of it. I promise you, you face Raymond Daniels, I can make you famous. That's another one for Raymond, the real deal. Daniels, ladies and gentlemen. A little Billy the Kid from Young Guns 2. I'll make you famous. Well, he's 37 years young and still at the top of his game. He is the Bellator kickboxing welterweight champion, Raymond Daniels, who puts a capstone on the Bellator kickboxing year. Here at the Nelson Mandela Forum in Florence, Italy, we are set for more Bellator MMA action as we go to the tail of the tape. Brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spiced Rum, the bold 93-proof rum that's edgy to the core. And look at the height and reach advantage for Gregory Bobbin, six foot and a 72-inch reach. Official introductions will be handled by the one and only Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA on Spike now presents middleweights inside the Bellator cage set for three five minute rounds. We introduce the blue corner first at five foot eight. He weighed in 185 pounds even. His professional record stands at one and four. He fights out of Firenze, Italia, presenting Tony Zanko. And across the cage is adversary out of the red corner at six foot, weighing in 185.2 pounds as a professional. He brings 18 wins, 11 losses. He fights out of Paris, France, introducing Gregory Blade Bobby. In charge of the action, your referee, Todd Anderson. Referee is Todd Anderson, set for three five-minute rounds in the Bellator MMA middleweight division. You ready? You ready? Hey! Fight Clock, brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. Tony Hulk Zanko in the blue gloves. Gregory Blade, Babine in the red gloves, and Zanko well, he hasn't competed for over a year, Jimmy, and will try to snap a three-fight losing streak in this contest. Conversely, Babin on a three-fight winning streak. And oh, he nice immediately knee. buries a knee into the midsection of Zanko, looks for the tie plum, and has Zanko on his back early. Easy trip into half guard. Last time he was here in the Bellator cage, fought Emiliano Sordi. Babin with the upset win, guillotine. He yep. does have submission skills. A nine submission win, so half of his 18 victories have come nice, via easy. tap out, right into full mount, slashing elbow strikes, and Jimmy, he's 2-0 and oh in the Bellator MMA cage, and Babine has Zanko in trouble. That's exactly where Zanko doesn't want to be mounted early in the round. One minute has gone by. How much longer will this one last? 
I don't think it's going to go much longer unless he figures out a hip escape, tries to bump and beat this positioning. Right now he's just covering up. That won't do it. But being made, started training MMA at 15, made his pro MMA debut in May 2004. So a 13-year veteran right now making it look easy at the expense of Tony Zanko. It's Zanko's nickname, Hulk, but it's Babine who is doing the Hulk smashing right now. Yeah, he's a much bigger fighter. He's in dominant position. Zanko trying to do this backdoor escape. He's got to get his feet underneath the armpits of Babine. Babine's not going to let that happen. Crowd chanting Tony, but all the chanting in the world won't help you get out of this position if you don't know how. Yeah, Zanko, the local favorite from Albania, but now living here in Florence, Italy. Babine going key lock. Babin began training Muay Thai in 2009, MMA in 2010, made his pro debut in 2012, and Babin now on his back, but looking for that armbar, and there's the tap, lightning quick tap, and Babin with his 10th submission win sends Zanko to his fourth straight loss. All right, before we get to the official announcement, Jimmy, let's take a look at the finish. Oh, he started out in the key lock from the mount, the Americana. Locking up the arm. Here's how we got him down. Look at this foot trip on the outside. Boom. Straight in the half guard from there was an easy mount. Ground and pound. He got to isolate the right arm. And when he went to the ground, he held on to it. Straight arm bar, easy tap. All right. Here once again, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of an armbar official time. Two minutes, four seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, Gregory Blade Babine. So Gregory Babine improving to 3-0 and oh in the Bellator MMA middleweight division. As his opponent, Tony Zanko, went down faster than a plate of Mama Ranallo's gnocchi. Mihal Nika, 6-0. Oh, Carlos Miranda, 10-3. What does Nika not know about the cage? We'll find out tonight. Here with the official introductions is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Tonight, Miller Light presents Bellator MMA. From Firenze, Italia, here at Nelson Mandela Forum, we begin the action now with three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at 5 foot 11, weighing in 156 pounds even, his professional record. Ten wins, three defeats, fighting out of Curitiba, Varana, Brazil. Introducing the lion, Carlos Leo Miranda. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 155.6 pounds. As a professional, he stands undefeated. Six victories, no defeats. Originally from the Republic of Moldova, now fighting out of Torino, Italia, presenting Mihail Nika. In charge of the action, your referee, Dan Mergliata. Veteran official Dan Mergliata has been given the job of presiding over this lightweight matchup. Three five-minute rounds to get things started here in Firenze, Italia. The belt and round one fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers. It's Miller time. Mihail Nika in the red gloves. Carlos Miranda in the blue gloves, and Jimmy Miranda telling us that he's going to be very aggressive, but also technical, and he predicts a knockout win. Well, the thing is, he's facing a guy who tends to start quickly. And when I said we don't know what he know, doesn't know in the cage, what I mean is when you're a finisher and you're used to finishing guys early, you know, Nika hasn't been in the deep water very often. He hasn't had that tough, gut-check, grueling kind of fight. Only six fights in. Could it be tonight where he gets tested? Yeah, Nika making his Bellator and lightweight debut in that fight that lasted 36 seconds. Graduated from culinary school, has worked from as a chef, but is uh, fully committed to cooking up the win here in Bellator MMA and now at close quarters. Fits a Greco-Roman wrestler. That's Miranda's background. That's right, the Brazilian national Greco-Roman wrestling champion. And Miranda has Nika in trouble. He's, he, 
he collapsed like that was a groin strike, but nothing from the referee. He's got to keep defending himself. Yep. Ground and pound from Miranda. The Lion roaring early here in round one. Miranda keeping the pressure on. Half of Miranda's 10 wins have come inside the distance. Nika fighting back now as he's back to his feet. Eats that right cross. Misses with the right uppercut. Nice body shot. Two hooks to the body. Terrific start to this fight. With Miranda now working that tie. Plum again. Also a national Muay Thai champion in Brazil. But Nika now looking for the back. But well defended by Miranda. The problem with the submission game Nika has, it requires a takedown early, and he hasn't been able to get that. And good body lock, excellent trip. Right into the half butter. Well, now the closed guard of Mihail Nika. One about, I think, a headbutt there. Nika trying to isolate the left arm of Miranda. He might have it. Uh his elbow is a little too deep now. He's out, switching triangle. Nico, Not going to get it. Very balanced of his six wins, three knockouts, three submissions. Midpoint of the opening round. As Nico tries to control the wrists of Miranda. Miranda looking to posture. Deliver that elbow, the slashing elbow across the jaw. Miranda looking to cut up Nika here in round one. And that's what I meant about that gut check. So far, this fight not going Nika's way. Miranda getting a lot done on the feet. Now on top, good ground and pound, elbows over the top. How do you react when it's not going your way? That defines a fighter. Nika trying again to control the uh, attack of Miranda. Miranda able to again nail him with an elbow strike. And now Miranda peppering the body with shots. So Miranda trying to stay busy in the guard of Nika. Meanwhile, Nika fishing for a potential submission on the bottom, Jimmy. Yeah, he's been trying to work the armbar on both sides. Hasn't gotten it yet. You see him walking up, but this Miranda's keeping so much pressure on him. He can't really set up his, his armbar properly. He's kind of going for it almost defensively. He's trying to go for it quickly rather than walking up oh, and setting it up. There's some old school Mark uh, the Hammer Coleman <laughs> headbutt to the... Uh, the body can't headbutt to the, the head anymore. Times. And there's some more elbow strike. Final minute of the opening round. Good start to his Bellator MMA career for Carlos the Lion, Leal Miranda. And there is blood, plasma already being produced thanks to those elbow strikes from Miranda. Miranda just keeping the physical pressure on. Not just the strikes, but also the weight. He's keeping the physical pressure on Nika. Not letting him get his guard game going at all. And Miranda from Curitiba, Brazil, in a position that we've seen Mauricio Shogun Hua in many times during his legendary career. And there, on cue, the Mauricio Shogun Hua stomp to the body. Yep. Good job by Nika getting back to his feet. And Nika in the final seconds of the round back up to a vertical base. Good stuff here between these two Bellator MMA youngsters. Jimmy Smith has the unofficial scorecard. How did you score the opening five minutes? 10-9 for Miranda. Thought he completely controlled that opening round. Now we're gonna see what the undefeated fighter has. Down 1-0. During the break, referee Mergliata went to Miranda's corner, and Jimmy, you called it the axe kick. I called it the stomp. Of course, yeah. the stomp is illegal. Mergliata warning him, saying yep. it was more of a stomp instead of an axe kick. Yeah. Axe kicks are legal. Yes. Good shine of sportsmanship to start round number two between Carlos Miranda in the blue gloves, Mihail Nika in the red. Nika putting his unbeaten streak on the line. 6-0 to start his mixed martial arts career. We can call it what we want. You know whose opinion matters? Dan Mergliata. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice right, right cross by Mihail Nika. Best punch of the fight for the resident of Torino, Italia. Opa, opa. 
Now Miranda putting the punches together again. They clinch. And that Ty Plum paying dividends for Miranda. Knee right up the middle. Man, talk about Kudatiba style. That shoot box Plum, he goes for it. And that Greco background, he doesn't worry about the body clinch. He knows he can counter that. He's deft at oh, using man. the elbow strikes. Brings Nika back to the canvas. Just flung him to the ground. Stepping over full mount. And Mihail Nika in dire straits. Perfect record in jeopardy here in round two. Look at him wrapping up the legs, staying with the low mount. Hammer fists that were partially blocked by Miranda. This is Miranda's going with the low mount. Wants to get underneath the armpits, really sit up to land serious ground upon. From here, it's going to be close. It's going to be closer to chest to chest. You're not going to land those big strikes. But you know what you can do is land medium ones and take the energy out of your opponent. It's very hard to buck out of this position. Yeah, Nika trying to do just that, yeah. trying to explode. Buck up. But uh, Miranda just carving him up with those elbow strikes. Miranda very composed, very focused, patient. He belies his 23 years, Jimmy. Yeah, fighting like a veteran right now. And he's he not is going a crazy in this position. Veteran of 13 fights, but nothing at this level. Making his debut in the Bellator MMA cage, making it a memorable one thus far as Nika trying to reverse, trying to get the sweep. Back to escape, arm. but left he his has arm. left his arm. Miranda has one submission win, and now it's Nika trying to reverse his fortune in this fight. Can't keep him there. If you looked at that again, Miranda was a step ahead in every position. As in, Nika couldn't take the back, wasn't really in, in uh, guillotine danger. Smart positioning by Miranda. Oh, groin shot. If the yell didn't tell you. And Mihail Nika, if this fight hasn't been tough enough, will have up to five minutes to recover after that shot to the peninsula south of the equator. And uh, he continues to walk it off. Mergliata will warn Carlos Miranda. I would expect Nika to take a good amount of time. He wants to stop the mo momentum of Miranda at yeah, this point. Especially yeah. what he's been through in this fight, yeah. spending a large portion of it on his back, fighting off the sustained attack of the fighter from Brazil. Miranda first started training in MMA because he wanted to get in shape, wanted to put on a little muscle. But once he started training, well, he fell in love with the sport. And he's off to a, a great start in his career. All right. Action resumes here in round number two, and Miranda launches a kick. Under two minutes remaining in the frame. Oh, spinning back fist by Nika clipped Miranda. But Miranda putting his combinations together, Jimmy. He is. It's been at least two or three every time he's punched. And no fear of this clinch. That's what that Greco background lets him do, is that he can fall right into this position. He knows he'll get the takedown. And Easy inside trip. Of Miranda again uh, has Mihal Nika on his back in the closed guard. But Miranda seemingly has the strength advantage, able to post up looking for that old school can opener momentarily. Man, the headbutts, the can opener, he's a student of it's the game. He's an old school guy. <laughs> old school guy. Old soul <laughs> at 23. And look at the head on the back of the mat, mouth wide open. Final minute of the second round. And Mihail Nika again fishing for that submission from his back. Miranda having none of it. Nika is seeing the downside of being a great finisher. This is not, he's just not used to this kind of thing. He's not used to these long, grueling, tough fights. And he's running out of gas. You can see in his posturing, you see in the way he's fighting. You don't want to let your, the back of your head hit the mat like that. He is tired, and Miranda is not letting up. None of Nika's six previous outings have gone to the judges' scorecards. But he is being pushed to the limit here 
by the debuting Carlos the Lion Liao Miranda. Under 20 seconds left in the second round. What can Miranda do to improve his position, Jimmy? Well, time now running out, but we'll see Nika fishing for the submission. We'll, we'll get your thoughts on top position in the third round. The bell and round three, Jimmy, two-parter, your unofficial scorecard, and uh, talk about Miranda maybe maximizing top position because we've seen him there repeatedly in this fight. Well, easy, both rounds for uh, Miranda, 10-9. You could go 10-8 maybe in the second one. Uh, what I would say to maximize his, his opportunity is when he's on top, he's pounding a lot, but he's not passing necessarily when there's an opportunity. Uh, Nika throws up a submission. He's content to get out of it. I think passing Whoa. half guard, maybe improving position a little bit more with that ground and pound would help him. Better start for Nika. Launches that lead left hook to the face of Miranda. As uh, Nika knows, he, he's probably behind the uh, proverbial eight ball and uh, looking to uh, score a flashy finish. But Miranda, again, with the waist lock and the takedown. But now it's Nika looking for the guillotine. Hips are not in good position right now. You see, he's trying to re-cinch it. He opened his guard to re-cinch the guillotine. He knew he didn't have it tight enough. And now Miranda passing the half guard. This is what I meant, advancing position as you ground and pound a little bit. A grueling affair here in the Bellator MMA lightweight division. And Mihail Nika spending a lot of time on his back eating those slashing elbow strikes by Miranda. Not exactly a part of anyone's well-balanced diet, Jimmy. No. A minute and, and a half gone of the final into him. round. Never yeah. get tired of it. But you mentioned it, Jimmy. I mean, Miranda here in the half guard. And again, he's been busy. He's been active. You'd like to see him maybe be a little more. Yeah, when it comes to the passing side, he's been active with his ground and pound. But me, Mihal Nika has opened his guard a few times, and I didn't think Miranda took advantage positionally. Mihal Nika began training in MMA back in 2012, made his pro debut just last year, has been busy. Now in the half butterfly guard. But uh, Nika just hand grappling here, just trying to control Miranda's attack. And there he controls the posture. Problem is, is that submissions get harder as the rounds progress. He gets sweatier. It's much more difficult to pull him off. Came close to a couple in round one, but since then, it's been all Miranda on the ground. Miranda came off a split decision win in March of this year. His fourth straight victory. He's been with his trainer, Christopher Led since the very first day he started training in October 2012. Now again, dropping the elbows, but Nika valiantly trying to defend and initiate some offense from his back. Only guy I ever saw really do that effectively was Joachim Hansen. Joachim Hansen, very good at that. Very aggressive on the ground. He was aggressive. Pretty much every position. Amazing. Minute 45 left in the fight. Shudo was a great organization for those yes. who don't remember. And pride fighting as well, man. Fantastic. A lot of memorable finishes. The glory, the halcyon days of mixed martial arts. <laughs> and of course, we keep it alive with Bellator MMA going global here in Florence, Italy. And this is the first fight of the night. And this is when, if you're Nika, you realize either I go for it all or I'm going to lose this fight. He is way down. Miranda, you see, taking a little bit of a break. Not as effective with the ground and pounds he was in the first couple rounds. Nika trying to, well, he is delivering hammer fists from the bottom, but they're like windshield wipers. Yeah. It's not going to do that much damage. And not going to keep the, the rain no. from falling in the form of those blows. They will not. Final 45 seconds of this lightweight encounter. Trying to isolate the arm again. It's all or nothing right now. Nika looking for the Hail Mary late in the fight. 
He won't get it. 30 seconds left. And that's what I mean in terms of Miranda dives right back into the guard. Didn't try and clear the legs, maybe get a better position. Dove right back into the guard where Nick is still going to try and isolate the arm. He's still going to go for what he knows how to do. Miranda momentarily stacking Nika, now dropping some long-range hammer fist. Final 10 seconds of the fight. Carlos the Lion, Leal Miranda, looking good in his Bellator MMA debut. So will Miranda win his Bellator MMA debut, handing Mihal Nika his first professional loss. We'll find out when we hear the official decision next. And pure dominance from the El Miranda. Mostly with the ground and pound. Nika going for a couple submissions, but not getting close enough. Great stuff from the Thai Plum. Excellent Muay Thai like we'd expect. And the physical dominance just flinging Nika to the ground with these takedowns. And once he was on top, he never gave Nika a moment's rest negating the submission game, and that's why I think he won this fight. All right, you heard from the unofficial scorer, Jimmy Smith. Let's make it official now with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges in cage side. Your first judge, Eric Colon, scores the fight 30 to 26. Well, judges Sal Diamato and Brian Miner both see it the same 30, 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, the Lion, Carlos Lijo. Miranda. A big moment in the life and career of Carlos Leal Miranda, committed to his faith, wins his Bellator MMA debut, handing Mihal Nika his first setback in seven professional fights. Tale of the Tape is brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spiced Rum, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. You see, they weighed in almost the same, but Lena Chinakova walks around about 122 pounds. She has to work to stay at 125. She got beasted against Re Rebecca Ruth. Can that happen at the hands of Alejandra Lara tonight? With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. From Spike Sports, Bellator MMA now moves to the flyweight division tonight. Set for three five-minute rounds. We introduce the blue corner first. At five foot five, she weighed in 125 pounds even, making her Bellator debut tonight. She brings six professional victories, just one defeat. Hailing from Medellin, Colombia, presenting Alejandra Azul Lara. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 124.4 pounds. Her professional record, 12 victories, four defeats, fighting out of Lviv, Ukraine, presenting Lena Hunter of Chinikova. And the referee in charge of the action, Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, the third individual inside the cage, overseeing this flyweight matchup, three five-minute rounds. Ready? Ready? Hey! Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. Ovechi Nikova in her fourth Bellator MMA fight, welcoming the charismatic Alejandra Lara to the Bellator MMA cage. Alejandra Lara has a karate background, which she started, and you can tell by her stance immediately. Ovchinikova, the southpaw stance, wearing the red gloves. Lara in the blue. Feeling out process in the opening 30 seconds. But confidence radiating Man. from Lara, just to 23 years of age, six and one, five fights, five of her wins inside the distance. Now she's smiling, she's happy, she's relaxed. Doesn't look like the nerves are getting to her. Of course, Alima McFarlane, the inaugural Bellator MMA flyweight champ. Oh, Whoa. great combination that rocked Lara Lara. Quick to cl close the distance after she ate two solid punches from 
Hope Gina Kobo's got Lara in trouble early. She has her early, she has a scarf hold arm lock. She might finish it here. Hope Gina Kova has eight submission wins. You see the head and arm position. She still has the arm trapped between her legs. All she has to do is put the pressure on it. Got her head out. Good. Just got to worry about her back. Good escape by Lara. It's a problem with the head and arm throws. If your opponent pulls their head out, they take your back immediately. Lara has four victories via first round knockout or submission. Three KOs and one tap out as she uh, turned the tables here on Ovchi Nakova. After a, a bit of adversity early in her Bellator MMA debut, she's in side control. Now we see what Lara has on the ground. She can keep her here. She's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black or blue belt, excuse me. But has spent most of this year in Mexico training with Team Grasso. Easy mount. Stepped right over into it. And as you mentioned, Jimmy, he's also worked with Rufus Sport under the tutelage of the estimable Duke Rufus. And uh, yeah, Lara has Ovchi Nikova now tasting some adversity for the first time. Midway through round one in the full mount, Ovchi Nikova controlling Lara's posture. Now she's doing a good job of keeping Lara close. She can't land any devastating ground and pound. But she's not hip escaping, she's not bumping, she's not doing enough to improve the position yet. Holding on from the bottom, which, you know, it, it, you can muscle your way out if you, if you lock your opponent down and bump, but I don't think that's going to work. Talk about Lara's many skills and attributes. She studied university for a bachelor's degree in children's pedagogy and uh, also decided to change her career and get a bachelor's degree in dance. We've seen some of her dancing and now Ovchinakova able to escape momentarily at least. So far Lara doing a good job of not letting her off the hook. Didn't just let her get free. Staying close to her body locks in. Final 90 seconds of the opening frame. Seesaw fair thus far. And once again, she's in that head and arm position. Lara can't get caught in another head and arm. Oh, Chinakova loves that throw. And now stepping over, trying to take the back herself. One hook in. Yeah, Lara thwarted at going for that backdoor escape. Yep. Thanks to that hook in with the final minute now of the round upon us. Yeah, excellent step over. Now she's got to work from low half guard. They call it deep half. I don't know how much experience she has with that position. Well, she's and she gone. lets it go. Yep, yep, right to mount. And now ground and pound from Ovchinakova as Lara trying to thwart the offensive onslaught from Ovchinakova. Scramble. Too soon with the mount. A little inexperience there. Lina Ovchinakova trying to step over too soon. Ends up in half guard. Still in a good position, though. He's rushing it just a bit. You can see that. You know, blue belt level jujitsu, you're just rushing it a little too much. Both fighters have made mistakes going for too much too soon. Ovchinakova, seven years older than Lara. Final 10 seconds of the opening round. Jimmy, unofficial scorecard after first five minutes. Lena Ovchinakova, 10-9. Laura had her moments in the middle, but I thought Ovchinakova did more damage, controlled more of the round. Referee Tata Anderson. Waiting for the door to be closed. Hey. The bell in round number two. Lena Ovchinakova in the red gloves, fighting out of the southpaw stance. Bellator MMA newcomer Alejandra Lara in the blue gloves. Had her moments in the opening round, but the veteran of China Kova ending the round in dominant position. Lara's problem on the feet has been with the hand speed of China Kova. She's been trying to kick from the outside, but she got caught with some serious punches in round one. China Kova, one of those people who decides to dream big or go home. She feels a dominant win in this fight would give her an opportunity to 
maybe challenge Lima McFarland for the Flyweight Championship. She also has designs on challenging for a Bellator kickboxing title. And of course, Bellator kickboxing follows Bellator MMA from Florence, Italy, here on Spike. This is where Rebecca Whoa. Ruth had success and Lena Ovchinikova's loss in Bellator. A little too much strength, especially in the clinch position. Good takedown by Lara, but can she keep this position? Now stepping through. It's a great position to half. She can keep uh, Lena Ovchinikova flat. It's a great half guard passing position here with your thigh on, with your instep on the, your opponent's thigh. You see the left leg on the, in, on the left instep on the thigh. She can keep it down and pry her right leg through. It's an easy pass, but she has to keep Ovchinikova's back flat. That's key to this position. Doesn't want her sitting up and getting an underhook. Lara's also trained with the likes of Sarah McMahon, Angela Hill, and others. In the past, she even spent uh, time at King's MMA in California under the tutelage of Rafael Cordero. So she's been training with uh, some top guns, preparing for her Bellator MMA debut, where she comes in six and one, five wins inside the distance. Now see the right leg being that high forward. What that does is that keeps her from locking her legs and, and, and locking half guard, but you're a little off balance, you're a little high. She wasn't busy enough for the referee. The referee warning Lara about grinding her forehead into the forehead of uh, Ovchinakova. Once again, good with the leg kicks, but she has trouble with the, the, the counters with the hands. Ovchinakova hasn't really tried to match kicks with her. She's used that as opportunity. Oh, oh nice. Back fist, back but fist. a nice counter right hand by Ovchinakova. Just past the midpoint of the round and the fight, scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bellator MMA flyweight division. Another counter right hand there by Ovchinakova. And Lara catches the kick and takes Ovchinakova down, but Ovchinakova able to secure the half guard. Yep. And now, here's the problem, is last time she kept so close, she wasn't able to be busy, busy enough or active enough. Of course, she stood up because of the, the grinding of the head, but she has to stay close and also do damage and also get her pass going. It's been a grinding yeah. affair. Exactly, and that's been her style on the ground, which isn't bad, but you have to stay busy enough to keep it there. It's not a jujitsu match. We have, you know, the whole time to try and pass half guard if you feel like it. Crowds get restless. Referees lose patience, and you end up back on your feet. And despite turning pro in December of 2011, Lara's just had, uh, well, this is her eighth professional fight. And you wonder how she's been able to fit those fights in with everything else she has on her plate. Once again, back to the feet. Under a minute left in the second. Sidekick. Got to do something to keep. Oh, good right hand yeah. down the middle by Lara. Got to do something to keep Ovchinikova at distance. That punching range has been a problem for her. And of her. course, the right hand is. Body lock. The enemy Another of the soft pop. Beautiful. Just a lateral drop there by Lara. She can get the hooks in. One, two. Got her back. Lara looking. Got to watch her feet are crossed. For her third submission win. Got her hooks in, like you said, Jimmy, but Ovchinakova desperately trying to avoid any submission attack. And we are through 10 minutes here in this flyweight bout in Firenze, Italia. How do you have it going into the third and final round, Jimmy? I have it all tied up. I give the last round to Lara, 10-9. I give the first round to Ovchinakova, 10-9. Third and final round underway. Alejandro Lara in the blue gloves. Lena Ovchinakova in the red gloves. And Jimmy, you, you noticed uh, something in the second round that you wanted to talk about in regards to Lara's strategy. Yeah, at the end of the second round, she had both hooks in and she crossed her feet. 
which they tell you never to do in jiu-jitsu because they can break your feet. And Ovchinikova stepped over both feet and tried to put the pressure on to break the ankle. It just shows that she has some little mistakes, little inexperienced things she's doing that are costing her on the ground. Wasn't enough time she was able to get her feet out, but never cross your feet when you take a guy's back. Black belt will break your feet, and that will teach you a lesson. So far, striking has been used mainly as an entry point into the yeah. clinch and the takedowns. There's a body, a liver kick by Ovchinakova. Ovchinakova with a double right hand, and again, Lara closes the distance looking for the takedown. But it's the Ovchinakova and the scramble here. They jockey for position. She likes that step over. Yep, good balance. See, though, yeah, she goes, she goes head and arm and step over. That's her combination. All Lara wants is to, you know, kind of weather the storm and get in clinch position and take off Chinakova down. And the tentacles of mixed martial arts spreading far and wide. Alejandra Lara representing Colombia in her Bellator MMA debut. Has off Chinakova's back. Some hammer fists trying to. Get her hooks in, Jim. She crosses her feet again. Watch for Ovchinikova to maybe go again for that lock over both feet. But that's the problem with it, you know, and that's the, the inexperience of Ovchinikova. She loves this head and arm position, but as soon as the head's free, your opponent's got your back and you're in trouble. And she keeps going to it. Didn't learn her lesson in round one. Ovchinikova's been submitted once in her career. Comes in with a record of 12 and 4 with one no contest. Lara looking for her third submission victory. Leaky faucet for Ovchinikova. Blood beginning to trickle out of her nose. And the determined Lara continues to look for that rear naked choker, the Mata Leon. Try to switch the body lock with her legs. She's doing a good job holding on to the back. Under two and a half minutes left in the fight, Lara. Has control of Ovchinakova, trying to take advantage of this position in the time remaining. She can flatten her out. She can keep her flat on her belly. It's a much worse position to be in. Ovchinakova trying to posture and get high, and good, good job yeah, with good the control, hips. And she does do exactly as you said, Jimmy, yep. flattening Ovchinakova out. And now under two minutes to go, Alejandra Lara in dominant position, but will try to force Ovchinakova to, to give up her neck. Problem is, he, she gave up one hook. Well, she's able to get it back, though. Now she's in position to get the rear neck if she can lock her hands and or stay behind her. potentially even a neck yeah. crank. You see that she's just barely holding on to position. Ovchinakova moves, does something, and Lara's just barely able to hold on. 23-year-old Alejandra Azul Lara looking for a third consecutive winner, first in the Bellator MMA cage, controlling Ovchinakova as we come up on the final 60 seconds of this flyweight fight. She unloads. She can stop this fight right now. now and now she's naked. got it. She's looking for that rear naked choke. Under a minute left, can Alejandra Lara force Ovchinakova to tap out? Got it. And she does. Alejandra Lara making Colombia proud as she wins her Bellator MMA debut, stopping the more experienced Lena Ovchinakova. And that's a big upset based on Bellator experience, overall fight experience, name recognition. Yeah, I mean, and right away goes back to the dance. She has all the attributes to be a star in this sport, Jimmy. She's got the moves, I'll give her that. Just. We saw the mistakes she has to clean up to be a factor in this division, but she can get there. She's young. Alejandra Lara improves to seven and one. She won't be feeling blue tonight.
A breakout performance for the Colombian Alejandra Lara. She gets the submission win in her Bellator MMA debut, Jimmy. And you can see past round one, she's going to walk through the strikes, get this fight down, and use her pressure and her submission game. She finally got the back. Nice hips, excellent pressure. And right here was the rear naked underneath the chin, and that is all she wrote. Great debut for Alejandra Lara. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a rear naked choke. Official time, four minutes, nine seconds. Round number three for the winner by submission, Alejandra Hazul Lara. The burgeoning Bellator MMA flyweight division has an emerging star in the 23-year-old Alejandra Lara. She gets it done in style, submitting Lena Ovchinakova the final round, rear naked choke. Welcome to Bellator MMA. Should be a lightweight barn burner tale of the tape brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spiced Rum, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. And look at the height and reach advantage of Yelchik, six foot and 72 inches. Here once again is Michael C. Williams. Tonight here in Firenze, Bellator MMA on Spike now. Features tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Brought to you tonight by Spike Sports. We introduce the blue corner first. At six foot, weighing in 155.6 pounds. His professional record, 10 wins, two losses, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland. He hails from Zagreb, Croatia. Presenting Luca, the hitman, Yelchic. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 156 pounds even as a professional. He brings 14 victories, seven defeats, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, and hailing from Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA, presenting Brandon Gertz. Gertz. In charge of the action, your referee, Todd Anderson. All right, Todd Anderson has been given the task of uh, refereeing this lightweight contest. Both of them eager to get things started. Ready? Ready? Hey! Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. Brandon Gertz in the red gloves. The debuting Luka the Hitman Yelchich in the blue gloves. Nine of Yelchich's... Yelchich's 10 wins have come inside the distance for Gertz, 10 of 14. So these guys don't like it to go to the judges and Brandon Gertz unloading a right hand from Hades right away that Yelchich absorbed and closed quarters. He likes that leaping hook over the top from the southpaw stance. Yelchich trying to throw that. Both southpaws. Yep. Yelchich trying to close the distance. I think he respects the speed of Brandon Gertz now. And of course, Yelchich has the size and reach on Gertz. Gertz trying to swimming, swim his way inside. That's what he has to do. Oh, and Yelchich looking for a knee knockout early. And wow! Man, Gertz, Gertz just, feeding those left uppercuts. And what about the chin of Yelchich? And Yelchich just going hard for the knees. Both guys throwing power shots like it's a one-round fight. Yelchich has been knocked out once in his career, but showing off a strong chin to kick off this, his first fight in the Bellator MMA cage. It's not often you see a couple of southpaws going at it, Jimmy. No, you don't. I mean, everything's different but the stance in this fight. Mielch is a lot taller, a lot bigger. Oh, and he's already yep. trying to get into the, the head of Brandon Gertz again. Gertz with the weight of a three-fight losing streak coming across the pond. Launches that catapult like left and then feeds oh! the right hand. Staggers! Mielch ground and pound! The losing streak is over in emphatic fashion! Man, great shot. Mielch still doesn't know where he is, trying to take down the referee. Remember what I said heading into this fight? Well, I'm going to say it again, especially here in Italia. Mamma mia! What a win! Talk about a gladiator. Brandon Gertz 
Went in oh. hard for the finish, and he got it. You knew it had to end that way, Morrow. Hey. You just knew it. How do you spell relief? K-O. <laughs> Back on track. Wow. All right, we will talk to Brandon Gertz, who just starched Luka Yelchich in Yelchich's Bellator MMA debut when we come back. Brandon Gertz with the knockout. Luka Yelchich came into his Bellator MMA debut, currently riding a four-fight win streak all in the first round. Well, the first round streak continues, but the winning streak is over thanks to the brutal power of Brandon Gertz. Yeah, he was throwing big strikes from the beginning. Look at that uppercut. Bam! Right to the face, and that is all she wrote. Beautiful stuff by Brandon Gertz. I'm sure this will be music to Brandon Gertz's ears. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. One minute, 57 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Brandon Gertz. Gertz. The losing streak is over in memorable fashion. Great sign of sportsmanship. Two warriors going at it in the Bellator MMA cage. You came in here fired up tonight. Did your opponent add to that with a little taunt, a little mugging? Because there was a lot of energy behind that knockout. You know, there was a little bit, man, but I had something to show, man. I got the power, and I can knock out anybody in this division just like that. To walk out here with the gladiator mask on, I know you, you, you appreciate the history of Warriors here in Italy. What was it like to win in front of this crowd? It, it was absolutely great. I want to come back when we fight in Rome. I mean, this, this, uh, this city, this town, everything's amazing here, guys. I love this country. It's great. Let's give it up for Brandon Gertz, another KO, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon Gertz running through Luka Yelchich like foreign water through a tourist. What a win. So we are here, the main event for the Bellator MMA Middleweight Championship, the tale of the tape, brought to you by Blackheart Rum, the premium spiced rum that's bold, 93 proof from the edgy to the core. Look at the reach advantage, eight inches for the champ, Rafael Carvalho. It's time to get loud with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Miller Lite presents Bellator MMA on Spike from Nelson Mandela Forum in Firenze. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation Chief Lit Malerba. Chairman is Kevin Brown. Supervising at cage side, Mr. Mike Mazzulli. Tonight's world title fight is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. It's Miller time. And now, introducing the blue corner first. At six foot one, weighing in 184.2 pounds. In his first fight for a world title, he stands with 19 professional victories. 11 defeats, training out of Coconut Creek, Florida, USA, and hailing from Roma, Italia, presenting the challenger, Alessio Legionario Sakara. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at six foot three, weighing in 184.6 pounds. Tonight, in his third title defense, he enters with 14 professional victories, just one defeat. Fighting out of Curitiba, Paraná, Brazil, presenting the defending Bellator middleweight world champion, Rafael the Blade. Cavallo! In charge of the action, your referee, Dan Mergliano. 
So Dan Mergliata will be the referee for the Bellator MMA middleweight championship fight. A possible five, five minute rounds. And you can feel the energy throughout the Nelson Mandela Forum. They've all come to see if Alessio Sakara can make history. Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. The Bellator MMA middleweight champion, Rafael Carvalho in the red gloves, the challenger Alessio Sakara in the blue gloves. Carvalho said that this is going to be like two Roman gladiators going at it. He does not think it will go the distance. Both of them, he expects to go out on the respective shield. Another thing to keep in mind, Alessio Sakara hasn't made 185 in a long time. He talked about how long it took him to, to cut down, how early he had to start. Will he have the gas? Oh. Should this go late? Good He's right hand. Been rattled. And Carvalho's already hurt. Sakara, the elbows, it's dead. That's it, it's over. Carvalho making a statement. Crushing KO of Sakara early in round one. You talk about a deafening silence. There is a deafening silence in this arena tonight. Rafael Carvalho just went in and got it done. Man, that was fast. Carvalho, it's like he took the power out of the Nelson Mandela Forum and then, well, he turned out the lights on Rafael or Alessio Sakara. Wow is right. A lightning quick finish. 44 seconds is all it took for Rafael Carvalho to blow away Alessio Sakara and retain the Bellator MMA middleweight championship. And look at the flying knee against the fence, the elbow over the top, right above the ear. That was all she wrote, just a little bit of follow-up ground and pound and good night. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. 44 seconds into round number one, the winner by knockout and still Bellator middleweight world champion, Rafael the Blessed Carvalho. Carvalho improves to 6-0 in the Bellator MMA cage with his sixth win via first round knockout. Joins Alexander Slomenko, the only fighters to successfully defend the Bellator MMA middleweight title I'm three times. I'm here with times. the winner and still champion, Rafael Carvalho, coming into hostile territory. Didn't seem to bother you at all. Primeiramente, gostaria de agradecer a hospitalidade do do povo de Florença. Dizer que eu dedico primeiramente essa vitória a Deus, a minha equipe. Aqui, mestre André Dida, Sérgio Moraes, meu mestre Rogério Leite, que ficou lá em Curitiba, enfim, estou muito feliz com essa vitória e daqui para frente vai ser assim. Não, não importa quem venha, eu creio, eu acredito em quem me colocou aqui. Quem me colocou aqui não quer que eu saia daqui. Então, estou muito feliz com essa vitória. I like to thank you everybody for the hospitality. I like to thank all my equipe. I believe that who take me here in this cage want me to stay here and never leave. Speaking of that, some big names at 185 coming in after his belt. What does he say to the challengers? Esta muita gente está querendo la tu cinturón. Que vos iba a falar para él. Who are next? You heard it, the champ, Rafael Carvalho. Who's next? 